Guys, I'm pretty excited here. I'm sitting next to this coil underwater looking for the perfect coil. Now guys, I've been looking for the perfect coil for a while. I want one that leaks just a little tiny bit for our pressure test and vacuum test. And I think I might actually have the one. If you guys can't see it, there's a leak here. There's a couple leaks on this coil, but they're smaller. Let me zoom in and you can see them. You guys see the bubble passing through there? That's our leak. I'm gonna let this thing sit in here for a little while and see how much pressure we lose. Now it's gonna be cooling off, so it will drop a little bit because it's cooling off, but it shouldn't be that significant. One or two PSI. It's gonna be hard to tell on this gauge, but you know what? I know it's leaking. It's leaking less than the other one, and I'm pretty daggone excited. Well, here we are again with another old ass coil that I confirmed was leaking very, very little. It leaks so little, it's gonna be perfect for this test. I put it on about 375 pounds with the analog gauge on the top of it, and it just lost a few PSI between this afternoon and tonight. It's around eight o'clock now, and that was about five or six hours ago. So I think it's gonna be a perfect coil for this demonstration. We're gonna do a 30 minute nitrogen hold test with the Yellow Jacket P51-870s. And we're gonna lower the bar for leakage from 0.8% down to 0.5% to see if this sucker can pass the test. Let it stabilize for just a moment. As soon as we hit the set P1 button, it's going to start our 30 minute test at 0.5%. We're going to see if it'll pass. Here we go. Let's see what happens. So here we are at the last 10 seconds of our nitrogen test and it looks like we're gonna pass with flying colors pass lost a total in almost nothing less than half a psi for most of the test as it fluctuated we're at 0.3 psi and it's fluctuating back to normal what are the reasons for this well one of the reasons could be that there's a little bit of refrigerant still trapped in the oil that's in this coil maybe that's true but really, how much of an effect is that having? All the other coils seem to be leaking pretty well. And we know this one leaks in at least two spots. That's what makes it extra scary. So this coil lost almost nothing. At very late stages of the test, it still showed as a 0.0, .0 loss. It would fluctuate down, but it would pop up too. Back and forth, back and forth. Very scary stuff. So we're going to go on to the part that I know we're all wondering about. The vacuum and vacuum decay. So we're going to hook up the stuff. We're going to check it out. We're going to answer the question, can we fool the BlueVac app into thinking that we have a non-leaking coil? As you can see, we have the BlueVac stuff set up. We have the two hoses. We have it going into the T like we did, but we could do it a different way. We could use two different connections. We're just doing the T because it was kind of already set up that way. Have the blue vac micro. We do have the app as well. You're going to see that on the screen while we're vacuuming out this coil. So we're going to get going. We're going to turn this thing on and see how we do and see if we pass the decay test on the app.
So we're opening up the BlueVac app. We're looking inside and we can see there's targets. They're adjustable targets, but the default is for beneath a decay, you want to be there for 10 minutes after you valve off. If you're there for 10 minutes and you're not above that 500 mark that we've set, then you pass the vacuum. Now that's the default. You can change that to a different number. You can make it so this vacuum fails, but we're going to discuss the time we spent in decay and the time we spent vacuuming. And that's the important part. That's the part that's going to get real interesting. So take a look at this. Now let's switch over to a different screen. As you guys can see, judging from the time at the bottom, you can see what we're talking about here. From zero to 45 minutes, we were in the vacuum. I changed the oil two times. The first time it was very cloudy, the second time much cleaner, and the third time it stayed clear. At the 45 minute mark, we valved off for the decay. Now keeping in mind, we said 10 minutes was a default for keeping below the decay to pass the vacuum test. This one stayed below the maximum decay target of 500 microns for over half an hour. It was closer to 40 minutes that we were below that time, meaning unless you extended that decay parameter to over 45 minutes, it would have shown this test as a successful and passed vacuum test. When you go into the BlueVac app, there is an information button next to the decay parameters, and it will tell you that when doing a vacuum decay test, you take 10 minutes and you add one minute per ton for the decay test. Now with a ton and a half coil, that would mean 11 minutes and 30 seconds. And as you can see, we far surpassed that below decay. So theoretically, if we were following the directions of this app, following all the directions of vacuuming that we've learned thus far, we just had a successful and passed vacuum monitored by an app put through a proper decay that was on a leaking coil. Leaking in two different spots. Guys, I want to know what you think about this finding. Email me at hvacshoptalk at gmail.com. You can call or text 910-970-0774. I think we're onto something here that is a weakness of the industry and perhaps something that's slipping through more often than we'd like to think. Probably we need to tighten up the rules and practices that we use during vacuum when so many of us don't even use a micron gauge. A micron gauge isn't actually a guarantee that you're doing anything right. You can take a look at the micron gauge. You can be in a great decay, or so you think it's a great decay, but it turns out it might not be as good as you think it is. So just a little bit of food for thought, guys. We'll continue this series at a different time when we think of some new stuff to try out, but we'll probably shift to something new coming up in the next couple of weeks. So stay tuned for that, and we'll get back to the show.